Morning all. Okay, so in the last episode we did the turnaround. In today's not today's episode. In this episode we're gonna do the poses. Now I've got this interesting little book next to me. Of the uh, how to animate things move things away. Still got the skeleton page up, which is quite good. And quite handily handily we've got very good way of how to do poses. So we start off with a little bean head, then we put the body like there, we do these flat feet, and then we put the fists like so. Now for Daffy, we're going to draw the beak and the tail. So, from this, we should be able to determine what is fundamentally wrong with our, uh, with our picture. So, for example, I think I had the, the body a bit too short. I don't think I put the head a bit too long. So, we will take all this and drag it up a bit. And I think we should have, oops, that's the one too, we should have there, we should have there, we should have there, we should have there, and there. Maybe have him like, kind of, <laughs> yeah, so realistically from that we've got everything we need to make Duffy Duck. Now we saw in the last episode of how to actually go into detail with them, you know, with the eyes and the mouth and things like that, with the nice, lovely little turnaround we did. But we're just going to work on the maquette. That's what I think it's called. And we're going to create some poses. So basically, the beans are first, then the features like the mouth and the tail, and then the limbs. How are we going to work? Let's do the famous duck burgers. So I've got it, got it over here for reference, but I'm going to try and get it as accurate as I can. So I know we did the bean, but in this, I'm going to give him a slightly puffed out chest. And then we know we've got his hand up here. And we know we've got a fist up here. We've got his feet here, and the other foot here. So we should have. So I think I might have done the legs a bit too long, and I don't know if his head too big, to be honest. Still kind of looks like that. So we've got a lot of interesting ways to do this character. Another one of Daffy's signature poses, or at least I think it's a signature pose, would have to be his crossed arms. Has hands like this, a sort of sneer at the world. And he's got this leg straight, always bent a little, and this leg shooting up. Still, 
little story about my relationship with this character. So when I was younger, I used to sometimes have my grandparents uh, and babysit. I mean, it was babysit when I was about twelve, but they did come when I was younger as well. So that's all right. And they used to always put on the Looney Tunes show. Um, because they were old and didn't really know what the TV, and every, I, mean, I don't really blame them. Every time I've gone to someone's house and they're like, oh, could you switch on the TV or something like that? It does take me a solid hour to figure out how the hell their new remote that doesn't share any features, but somehow has the exact same functions as every other remote works. So we'd sit and we'd watch them. Um, by far, my favourite characters in it, because uh, my dad also enjoyed watching uh, Looney Tunes, so sometimes watch them, but he was a very busy person, so that didn't arise as often. But, uh, my favourite characters were Wily e. Coyote, just him and the whole road I mean, thing was brilliant. I mean, you really, like, it, and it always kept you on your toes. You knew that, basically, he was going to get injured. But you never really knew how. So the setup could be, like, a truck's coming and he's holding a boulder and things like that. And you're like, okay, well, you're clearly going to get hit by the truck and then drop the boulder on himself. And then out of nowhere, the boulder, he'll, like, throw the boulder to try to run away. The boulder will roll up a hill, down a hill, back into him. Just a million different ways that you never think of. So it's always, like, subverting my preconceptions. And I really did, I really did admire them for that. It's sort of genius brilliance. So there was that, uh, there was Foghorn Leghorn, who uh, was a big chicken. And he... I've grown more fond of him as I'm older, and just listening to him rant. So he'll come up with all the, I think it's supposed to be Texan. I'm not quite sure, but it'll just be like, uh, we'll just say like someone's prepared to, that boy's got less uh, uh, nails than a barbershop or something like that, and you don't really know what he's saying, but it, I think Dimmer Than a Sack of Wet Mice was one of them. You don't really know what he's saying, but you're like, I really wish I could talk like this. <laughs> I think it's meant to be Texan, but I loved, I loved him. Also, he just talked to the audience like, now watch this, and then get me <laughs> immediately like barked at or have a bowling ball stuck on his head. And Daffy Duck, uh, to be honest, I don't actually think I watched a lot of him when I grew up. It was a lot of him and Bugs, it was never really much of him on his own. So, yeah. But I think together they were great. I like Yosemite Sam. Okay, so we've got these poses which are based off of a reference uh, image on the side. So we're going to try and make our own poses because obviously we're not always going to have that one. So let's go with... What do we want to be doing? Uh, Let's have him, that's a famous pose. Let's have him crouched over. Like just some simple kind of action poses that you probably normally see. I 
tiptoeing kind of pose, I think. So we'll fold the feet. I believe I read somewhere in terms of uh, Duffy Duck and it, to be honest, in terms of, I think it's Chuck Jones is the way well, it is. Anyway, I'm just kidding. But they were talking about warp cycles and things like that. And it was very much in the Disney sort of era of Milk Carl and things like that. They were saying you can't have a, a warp cycle this short or this long or things like that. And the dream was a two frame walk cycle, was a run cycle, a two frame run cycle, because you just draw two really good frames and everything. Else. And I believe the closest they ever got was three. And I think it was Chuck Jones or someone that explained that the reason why it's three is because you need to show the completion of each step and the passing position, no matter what. And his comparison was, I think, a wheel of a car or something like that. It's like, if you have two frames, one at the start of the wheel's turn and one at 180 degrees or uh, 360, it looks the same. So you need to have an in-between that shows it. I know that example kind of explains why it can be two. But yeah, it was something to do with that, I can't remember. Or it'll look like a wheel, if it's two. It'll look the same with two frames, I don't remember. But basically the rule of it is, I think they did, maybe they did, actually I think they did get it down to two frames, because of the whole Roadrunner thing. Because they made it so the ending, it was a situation where the end can look like the beginning. So, for example, with um, with feet, you need to have one in the middle, and then you've got one, two, three. Whilst if you've got the Roadrunner dust cloud, you know, if that's frame one, that could also be frame three. But as long as it doesn't look like frame, as long as frame two looks different, you're fine. Okay, so. I found that big that slight tangent over. I mean, his fist too big in that one. Okay. So recently, I've been watching the um, Cuphead season two, and it clearly tries to be like a lot of older shows, because of the style. Um, I personally prefer the game's animation style than the TV shows, 
the TV show is more, it's puppet, so it's kind of more modern day. Whilst... The game is more paper. And I prefer the pop prefer the paper style more because I find it more as an I don't know maybe maybe it is as an animator I don't know. It just seemed like the one thing that was going for Cuphead the most out of everything was its style. And the show really abandons it. The second season is, um... I've said this before about uh, animated shows, specifically nowadays, is that they don't grab a niche in front of it. So what I mean by that is, uh, the studio executives or the executives of any of them are all trying to make it like, this is the show that everyone will love. And the problem is, you just can't make that. You know, a 18 year, a 21 year old, uh, 20 year old TikToker is not going to have the same taste as a guy in his 50s who loves watching woodworking videos. You know, they're just not. Things like that. And yes, you do have things like the things that have crossed those universal boundaries. But they're not made to last. They're meant to be shown and kind of gone. If you ask most people who watch Looney Tunes shows, they couldn't really remember or recite you much of the specific episodes. And if they could, it just means they really like them. Or they're really into them. But most people won't. And you shouldn't make shows for that. You should find out what your target audience is and then be making more shows for those niches. Because there are a lot of untapped uh, areas that people just don't seem to go into. For example, I think Gravity Falls is probably one of the, and Avengers Time are probably some of the biggest shows going for Cartoon Network and Spongebob, probably. But they... They don't... The audience that watch them are very different from the audience that watch shows like Samurai Jack and things like that. You know, they want the very action orientated things. They like Dragon Ball and things like that. So for them, they're not going to watch Gravity Falls or. Uh, what's a new show that's come out? I think The Loud House is a new show. Is that, is that still going? Yeah, they're very, these shows have very audiences that match them, but people don't want to make shows to audience, they've got to match to everybody, and the thing is, you just don't end up with anything, and the product you do create in the second season, trying to appeal to more people, is nothing like the product that was, that people saw glimpses of in the first season. Different people have different tastes, and to be honest, you should probably just make as many different tastes and see what the audience is. That's what I feel is kind of missing, because I look at my childhood with uh, cartoons and animated shows, and I think there's a lot of variety here, you know, for 
the nine-year-old boy sort of trope, the nine-year-old girl sort of trope, the secret teenage club trope. You know, there's all these different things. I'm the guy slice of comedic life. There's all these different animated shows for different audiences. But nowadays it just feels like... Take Family Guy, for example. There's probably like eight Family Guy shows-esque shows that come out nowadays. You just don't see... You just don't see the same. There's no real variety. But that's the problem with everything, is that any sort of innovation is met with uh, rapid copies and reproduction. Okay, so we're approaching the sort of end of this episode, and I've just seen a reference picture on one of these, and I feel like this one is a great one to get into. So, we're gonna really I know this one good. So it's very uh, easy to get ahead of yourself and start doing details. I think you'll see it with every animator. Uh, is that take Daffy Duck for example? Is that you want to Before I think about drawing the feet, I was like, oh, I should draw the feet and things like that. And I was like, no, 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 just wait, just wait, hold your horses. Maybe up there. It's true, though, it's very uh... The one thing I've learned recently. Um, it's pretty good for an animator. I actually, I want to try doing it. I was studying 50s, 60s, and 40s cinema. Um, and to be honest, earlier as well, like 30s and whatnot. The black and white days. Um, people can always look at them and go, like, oh, it's crap, things like that. But in terms of performance nowadays, there's more nuance, things like that. So, you get less physical comedy or physical performance from things. And it's more of like, look how she could subtly, she can make herself cry with only one tear. It's more powerful. And, all that. and it, you know, it, it might be, but it doesn't translate that great for animation. So if you just copy what well, actors do, you might get a decent performance if you look at that. Whilst older ones are very corny, to be honest. So. For example, uh, you might have a guy who actually really does huff and puff his chest, like a cartoon and things like that. And you're looking at it going like, wow, this guy is very animated and things like that. That's perfect. Because these people um, were, weren't sure what acting was, so they just kind of uh, hammed up, would be probably the best way of saying it their performances they would do in real life. So if they were angry, they would be like, no, oh, I'm so angry, like a pantomime kind of person. And do some really interesting stuff. Also, a lot of it's practical, so you, you know that real people can do this. I forgot what it is. It would be his shoulders up here. This is what my sketches normally look like. They're just a mess of lines. So, to make it a little easier, what we're going to do is just um, for different animators, it's different things. Some some animators have the light touch, where they uh, they barely touch the paper. The pencil that kisses the paper. Some animators 
gouge of a vapor. I think I'm one of those. But it's, I mean, it's just like art. People have different approaches. We're just going to do more of this. And this will be the end of the episode for this. Yeah, I, you, I hope you've enjoyed. I seem to do better at... Uh, that one's dark. Although I can't remember his name. It's a Donald again. I seem to do better at Daffy though. Okay. I think I might have had a bit too good. So that is a messy duck. And yeah. I hope you've enjoyed. Uh, in the next episode we're going to be tackling expression. And we've got a very expressive character. Sometimes his eyes smush together. Sometimes they go away. So we've definitely got an interesting lot to work with here. But you never look. Oh, lovely, this book has a book page of expressions. Perfect. Okay, well, I'll see you in the next episode, and we'll, we'll dive into some of those. I think I'm not going to make a new layer, I'll just carry on with it. Yeah, I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you...